Here's a strategy video. Uh, quick recap, just in case you are unsure or forgot how the SHSAT is scored. If you're looking for something more in depth in how they score it, uh, the video that I made is in the description. You can click the link there. Uh, but here's a quick recap just to jog your memory. We have a raw score, which is how many you get correct out of 47, uh, and they take that for ELA and math. This is what you're used to seeing in school for scoring. Then we have a scaled score, and they take that out of 47, and they make it out of 400. And we're going to talk about what they do in here because it's not proportional. Uh, they do something interesting, and that's where the strategy comes in. And so you get an ELA score out of 400, a math score out of 400. You add those bad boys up, boom. That's your score that you send to the school out of 800. We call that the composite score, right? Cool. So what we're going to talk about today is how to maximize your scale score. Basically how to maximize this area right in here. Because, like I said before, it's not proportional. The SHSAT handbook on page 23 says this. I'm going to pop it up. Whew, magic, right? And so I guess I'm going to read that. Hold up. The raw scores and scaled scores are not proportional, right? In the middle of the range of scores, an increase of one raw score point may correspond to an increase of three or four scaled points score points. At the top or bottom of the range of scores, an increase of one raw score point may correspond to 10 to 20 scaled score points. What does that mean? Right? But that sentence, two sentences, three sentences, I don't know, is the key to the strategy. And keep in mind, this is from the, the city's handbook. This is public information, right? This is where they hit it. So let's look down here. Here's an example of potentially what they're talking about. Now, I'm not gonna stand by these numbers. I'm not gonna say you get 25 right, your scaled score is 206. This is merely an example, right? The city is very close to the chest as far as how they, how they, how they make this jump. But here is what they're talking about. Here's what this means. So you have a scale score of zero. You're gonna have a raw score of zero, right? So if you get zero right out of 47, your scale score is gonna be a zero out of 400. Likewise, if you get a 47 out of 47, you're gonna get that 400, right? Perfect is possible. So let's talk about in the middle of the pack here, right? You're getting 23, 24, 25 correct out of 47. Remember, this is a hard test. Most kids are gonna be in this area. Fingers crossed. That's what the city wants, right? That's that's They want to make a nice bell curve. So they make the test so that most kids hopefully fall right in this area. If you get 23 correct, you might walk away with a math score of 198, right? If you get 24 correct, you might walk away with a, two, a 202, and that's a 2. And I just, I got so far making this, and I made a mistake. I'm just like, they'll know that's a 2, right? I was... I just didn't want to do it again. And then if you get 25 correct out of the ELA, 47, you might get a 206. Notice that it's difference of four, and it's a difference of four, right? Four scaled points. Whereas if you're at the top end of the bell curve, and you're looking at getting 44 out of 47, or 45 out of 47, right? You might get a 350. If you get the next one right, that might boost your score to 365. That's a diff difference of 15. If you get the next one correct, that's another shift of 15. You might be with a 380. And if you get that last question correct on your math section to get that perfect section, you're going to get a bump of 20 scaled points, right? So the differences between the scaled points in this section are a lot greater. This is still 1. This is 15, 15, 20, right? This is just 4 and 4, right? So these questions between 24 and 25 are actually as far as your scaled score is concerned, not as valuable. Those last questions of the section, if you're nearing a high percentage, those are the ones that are worth quite a bit. So how does this affect your strategy? Let's talk about it. This is how it would translate. Again, these are my numbers. These are not supplied by the city in any way. These are just a, merely an illustration to show you the way that this works. Uh, when it comes to studying and your study plan, you should definitely form it with your tutor, uh, depending on your skill sets and what your goals are. 
So here's a quick example of how the concept works, right? How this hack works. So let's say raw score, we got Philippe and we got Maestro here. Uh, Philippe gets 35 out of 47 for ELA and a 33 out of 47 for math. You know, kind of solid scores, a little bit higher in the bell curve, right? Where Maestro does less than, you know, less than average uh, in the ELA, 20 out of 47, but does exceptional in the math section, 46 out of 47. The scale score would then be 260 for Philippe's ELA and 252 for Philippe's math, where the scaled score for Maestro is 184 for ELA and 380 for math. So when you combine these scores, what they end up with is Maestro has a 40 point, 42, 52 point advantage, right? Even though he answered the last questions correctly total 66 questions correct and this is 68 questions correct total Philippe gets the highest or Maestro gets the higher score because he's taking advantage of getting those last very high value questions correct whereas Philippe never gets enough correct to really get into that high question bonus point phase uh, in the section so what does this mean does that mean that you only need to study one section really well? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Because although Philippe did do except or Maestro did exceptional in his math, his ELA was in danger of getting into this zone. And just like these are more valuable, these are more valuable. The first couple questions you get correct are going to be worth about 20 or 10 points, right? So if Maestro slips too far, then yeah, he's going to be running into some trouble and taking away the advantage that he has over here. So you need to be solid in both. You can't get caught up in this section here. That's really dangerous, right? So you want to get one of your sections high. So as strategy, what I would say is to attack your favorite section first. Make sure you can answer all of the questions. If you go a little bit over time, that's fine. But then if you go you know, and do your English and realize you have extra time, you can always go back to that math section that you're you know, favoring and really get those last questions. This also highlights the importance of checking your work because if you make a couple silly mistakes and don't get up into this area, you could be missing out on some, some really nice points. So the, the moral of this is to, yeah, definitely try to maximize the, the, your strengths for sure. Really study those hard concepts, right? Or you know, if it's ELA, really focus on finding those detail questions and reading carefully. But also make sure that you're solid in your weaker section because if you're not, if you're really deficient, then you can, you can get into trouble. Okay, so that's all I have to say for this hack. Uh, thank you guys for checking the videos. Please drop a like or subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more videos hopefully in the near future and some live streams as well just to you know, help with studying and things of that nature. So if you have any recommendations, I, I know people have been asking about ninth grade videos. Uh, I'm looking into it and I'm seeing what I can find out. Uh, you know, that's not really my wheelhouse, but you know, I've, I've been looking into it for you guys. So awesome. Good luck with this. If you have any questions, you can drop a question below and I'd be happy to respond. Cool.